Well, thanks for staying with us on the show this morning. Let's get straight into our conversation starter, guided along headlines as earlier published on the newspapers. Joining us to expand the conversation is an ardent public affairs analyst and the president of Nigeria Nexus, Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Fowobi. Good morning to you, Honorable. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'm pleased and happy to be in the studio this morning once again. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, for quite some time now, the issue rift between the NNPC Limited and Angote Refinery has been uh, a bittersweet one for Nigerians. On one hand, Nigerians are happy that finally uh, PMS can be ref or crude can be refined in the country. But on the other hand, they are not quite happy that this does not necessarily mean that uh, these petroleum products will now come at a more affordable rate. I believe this is uh, the, the thoughts of many Nigerians. You see, Nigeria are beginning to get more intelligent by the day, especially if you live in a country like Nigeria, where every day by day you see a lot of dramas, a lot of uh, controversies, and a lot of uh, issues. You know, in the last few months, like I rightly posited, there have been back and front drama. You know, that drama was actually, for me, I feel like it's a, it's a stage, it's a stage managed kind of a uh, situation to actually give Dangote a soft landing as, you know, first of all, we were buying the fuel at 750. Between the time that it was agreed that Dangote is going to supply petrol to the markets, the price went up to 950 to 1000 thereabouts. Yes. That is to give, to set a template. You know, Nigeria government and the Nigerian environment, we are so intelligent and we are so smart because we have understood the people and we have known, mastered the art of managing the people. So what they did, because it would be like a shocker yes. to many Nigerians that Dangote being with uh, Dangote refinery now to supply for a certain amount of money would not be easy for Dangote. So all this drama you are seeing, even yesterday, even some few days ago, there was still drama between the NMPCL and the Dangote. Now, 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 I like that you mentioned that even as said yesterday, there was still a drama between these two uh, warring uh, parties of the oil and gas industry in the country. Let me just uh, refresh your memory and the memories of uh, our viewers out there as well. <sighs> uh, let's take a press release that was issued by the NNPC Limited this morning, uh, September the 16th. 2024 before we uh, take a look at what Angote Refinery also said yesterday. Now as it greets your screen, uh, the press release by the, NNPC, by the NNPC Limited. You'd find uh, that the NNPC Limited's press release says NNPC Limited releases estimated pump prices of PMS from Angote Refinery based on September 2024 pricing. The NNPC Limited has released the estimated prices of pe premium motor spirit, PMS, also known as petrol, obtained from the Dangote refinery in its retail stations across the country. The NNPC Limited also wishes to state that, in line with the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, PMS prices are not set by government, but negotiated directly between parties on an arm's length. The NNPC Limited can confirm that it is paying Dangote Refinery in USD for September 2024 PMS offtake, as Naira transactions will only commence on October 1st, 2024. The NNPC Limited assures that if the quoted pricing is disputed, it will be grateful for any discount from the Dangote Refinery, which will be passed on 100% to the general public. Attached to this statement are the estimated pump prices of PMS obtained from the Dangote refinery across re NNPC retail stations in the country based on September 2024 pricing. Uh, signed by Olufemi Sonoe, who is the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of NNPC Limited in Abuja. Now, thank you, Chijoke, for once again reminding us of this press release as issued on the verified NNPC Limited Twitter handle, mm -hmm. now known as X. It's as recent as it comes. It just was released this morning. Yeah. One of the shocking realizations there is the continued attempt to dollarize our economy. 
Mm. Whilst the trade between the NNPC and Dangote Refinery has always been talked about about strengthening the Naira, do you find it shocking that sales were again made in dollars? No, I am not surprised. You know, if you looked at, like I said, the drama that greeted the supply to the market today, you know, it took the intervention of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria before could was actually delivered to the President of the Federal Republic, uh, to the Dangote refineries. The President had to intervene because the NMPC, based on the agreement and based on the availability of crude, it was mm -hmm. difficult for NMPCL to supply Dangote uh, crude. Yes. Could. So it took the intervention of the President and some agreement made before we now saw that that rift or that agreement was, ag there was an agreement to that effect. Meanwhile, Dangote had earlier imported crude for the U.S. according to reports, and that purchase was made in dollars. In dollars. In dollars. So you would not expect to sell that to stock, sell that stock okay. at naira rates. But nevertheless, there is something that is eating that I still do not understand. That means the federal government and the NMPC they still have certain clarification and answer to give to the Nigerian populace. For example, how much are we getting PMS imported? How much was it? And how much was being paid as subsidy, so to say? Because how did NMPC arrive at owing suppliers 6.8 billion US dollars? And earlier, about some weeks ago, like six weeks or seven weeks ago, the NMPC too also told us that the federal government, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has mandated the NMPCL to sell crude at half of the price. So there are so many dramas. Now, with the new template that Nangote is rolling out, though he imported the crude, he refined, and is selling to the local market at 950, according to the calculation, uh, uh, considering the uh, uh, Give and take. Yes. Uh, the NMB DPR, the uh, inspection fees, and the rest of them, and the extra charges that was added. At least in Lagos, you can get the petrol uh, PMS in Lagos environment at seven nine hundred and fifty naira. In Abuja, you can get at nine hundred and ninety nine naira, almost a thousand naira. In Medugu, you can get at one thousand sixteen naira. You understand? But the point is this, that I want our people to focus our mind is that federal government still have a lot of questions. The Dangote refineries and supplies of PMS to the country should not in any way uh, divert our mind from the real fact. The federal government, the NMPC, CO Nigeria, certain questions of accountability and credibility. We need to know how much did the federal government and the NMPC import petrol PMS to the country and how much difference are they actually hiding you understand and why is nmpcl owing suppliers 6.8 billion so there's still a lot of politics that is going on and that shows clearly that where the federal government and some cabals are making this money in this country is through our crude pms and all that this drama that is going on in nmpc and all that and dangote shows clearly that there are still power that be that is so much interested in making money from this petrol and could. Well, 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 Honorable Desmond, what would you say about the confusing disparity in, in terms of uh, price of or the price of purchase of PMS from Nangote Refinery by NNPC Limited. Uh, we saw that Nangote Refinery re released a statement, uh, a press release yesterday, refuting claims by NNPC that they are buying fuel at 898 naira per liter from Nangote Refinery. Yet, Nangote Refinery did not clearly state how much they are selling it to NNPCL, but they refuted NNPCL's claims. I would want you to hold your thoughts on that. You would respond to it shortly, but let's uh, pick up the press release or press statement by Dangote Refinery uh, and see what they said concerning these confusing claims. Well, it reads, press statement, our attention has been drawn to a statement attributed to NNPCL spokesperson. Mr. Olufemi Sonoye, that we sell our PMS at 898 naira per liter to the NNPCL. This statement is both misleading and mischievous, deliberately aimed at undermining the milestone achievement recorded today, September 15, 2024. 
towards addressing energy insufficiency and insecurity, which has bedeviled the economy in the past 50 years. We urge Nigerians to disregard this malicious statement and await a formal announcement on the pricing by the Technical Subcommittee on Naira-based crude sales to local refineries, appointed by His Excellency President Bola Ametinubu GCFR, which will commence on October 1, 2024, bearing in mind that our current stock of crude was procured in dollars. It should also be noted that we sold the products to NNPCL in dollars with a lot of savings against what they are currently importing. Hmm. With this action, there will be petrol in every local government area of the country, regardless of their remote nature. We assure Nigerians of availability of quality petroleum products and putting an end to the endemic fuel scarcity in the country. Signed, Anthony Chijena. Group Chief Branding and Communications Officer of the Dangote Refinery, 15th September, 2024. In this uh, press list, there are some highlights. Yes. There are some areas that I want Nigerians to focus their mind. What, what areas and are those? That is one. It was reported that this petrol was delivered to, Dan to NNPC at dollar because of they imported it from outside the country. In and dollars. Another thing you should underline that this particular supply that is given to NMPCL is coming with a lot of savings. Underline that. It's coming with a lot of savings. But another thing that I find intriguing and something uh, somewhat is the fact that the price of what Dangote is giving to NMPC was not announced. But then, this morning, there was a circular by the NMPCL uh, the uh, price templates that showed how much Dangote gave them in dollars around 80 and less than one dollar, less than one dollar. And I saw the figure, I don't want to quote a wrong figure, but it's uh, less uh, than on, until a proper one, statement has one, been released by, yes, by yeah, Dangote. We also have that infographics here, which you're yes. trying to refer to. And it's now, before you even that, there's something I want you to know this country is a very crafty country, you know. You know that even this price you're saying, I'm saying this without any doubt, any iota of uh, any fear or favor, that there have been some re-engineering to this pricing. Why do you think so? You see, like I tell you, there are people, you know, before this agreement was made, there have been negotiation upon negotiation. Even NMPC themselves agrees to that fact that the reason why there was back and forth between the NMPCL and Dangote is because negotiation was going on and there are certain interests that must be covered and must be protected and that is what reflects in the pricing you are seeing today and i know if Ni this is just between nmpc and dangote now nigeria has not speak yet nigeria is the market and it is the market that will determine the price of petroleum so let nmpc and dangote continue all this drama but by the time nigeria will speak we'll look at the parameters we'll look at the code we'll look at what is what is obtainable and they will, we will set the price it's not dangote or nmpc that will set the price and against all odds you know dangote and nmpc have told us that it is not nmpc or dangote that set the price that it is uh, the technical uh, the, the pi uh, that if we look at the pia petroleum, uh, petroleum uh, industrial, industrial art, art yeah. industry art that that is where we need to study it well to see but we are not going to accept that the Nigerian people will not accept that we have the code we have the refineries we we'll look at what was what was best protecting the interests of the country, protecting the interests more importantly the masses because the cost of petroleum affects other aspects of our economy and lives. So we need to know what we are doing. We need to localize our problems and find a local solution to them. So we are not going to work with any international standard because Nigeria is not international. Everything we are doing here is local, and we have to protect the interests of the local uh, the local people. That is what I have to say. Now, much like Honorable Desmond has stated, we need to look inwards in finding solutions to Nigeria. And we'll look at more infographics while we have this discussion. But it's from the angle of how historic is it that for a 28-year law, Nigeria has been able to have a refinery working to locally refine crude into petrol so that we can have more availability in the country as against FX volatility. Now, this morning, some publications also captured it from the angle of the current administration's dedication to boost industrialization. And it's hinged on what is now known as the NARA for Crude Agreement. Yes. Now, you would rightly said that this first batch can be excused for having been imported in dollars. Yes. But going forward... From October 1st. 
beautiful from october 1st mm. what's your hope that this milestone would also affect the mm. industrial drive like you said the price of petrol will affect other sectors do you have the confidence that going forward should a portacot refinery or a worry refinery join down go refinery would not be pegging our prices against the global price of crude in the market no doubt Bito. This is a landmark achievement for the country, not just Dangote. And then, irrespective of what we are going through right now, the price template and the difficulties in getting for, for the fact that Dangote refinery is seated in Nigeria and right now they are already shunning out petroleum to the country is a huge success that the country should celebrate. <coughs> if not for the hardship that Nigerians are going through, I tell you sincerely that this called for a public celebration because it would boost industrialization, no doubt. What you're seeing at Dangote would improve industry. It would solve the problem of what? Energy insufficiency and insecurity, and it would help the economy. We are going to save more efforts. With this development, we won't have to put so much pressure on the dollar. You know, the reason why we calculated everything in dollar is because our economy, though we talked more about diversification, but still we practice a mono kind of economy that is, you know, associated with petroleum and all that. So with what we are having right now in Nigeria, it shows that the country is on the path of sustainability. And I want to join my voice with the rest of other Nigerians which who mean well for this country that NNPC should sit up and ensure that our refineries are working and beyond that modular refineries should be given priority and licenses that they also support the revolution that is going on and that is where you can now see competition that we are talking about we can't succeed in having a competitive advantage price that will benefit the poor masses if we do not give licenses to modular refineries and if we the nmpc do not activate our two refineries that are maribound right now. So much money has been spent. I know there are some there are policies, and I know the NMPC2 under President Bola Mentinubu will, as I speak to you, will be thinking of ways to see that these refineries are activated. And that is the only way that we can create more jobs and also create a better economy for the country. Otherwise, this money will be going into private sector. And then go to, and don't forget that though. Dangote refinery is seated in Nigeria, but it is also, it's not, it is one man business, but don't forget there are shares, there are owners, there are people who have shares to that business, and all of them are not Nigerians. That is to tell you that the best thing we can do right now is to also see that our refineries are working so that it can, to some extent, imagine NMPC is the major purchaser or a buyer of this PMS. And that's another challenge which Chijoke would also highlight the infographics with the position of NNPCL wanting to remain the sole buyer from Dangote, Ipman is asking that they be included in this buying so that they can open up the market. Do you think that a monopoly is good for what we're experiencing in the downstream sector at this time? That would eventually, you know, be resolved if our NNPC start working, our refineries start working. You know, NNPC will not continue or, for, or, or be the major buyer of, N of petrol from Dangote forever. It's just for the meantime. It all depends on the seriousness of the federal government and NNPCL to activate our refineries. Having said that, it is not anywhere good. If you're a student of economics, monopoly is not good because it gives you total control of the market and sometimes people can be so greedy and, business, and businesses are meant to be selfish business owners want to maximize profit and that is the concept of business anywhere anytime in the world well, 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 well uh, honorable desmond i apologize i might have to hold you there but there's something i really really want you to react to and that is the estimated pump price based on angote refinery september uh, 2024 pms Pricing. This was released by the NNPC Limited. Now, as it grates your screen, you will uh, be seeing the possible prices of uh, PMS yes. that will be sold in different uh, parts of the country. Starting at the very top, you'd find that in Sokoto State, it will likely sell for 999 Naira 22 Kobo. And the same goes for 
Kano State and Kaduna State in the FCT it will likely sell for 992 Naira 22 Kobo while in Brno State it will be selling for 1000 uh, 1019 Naira point 22 uh, Kobo in Oyo State 960 Naira 22 Kobo and in Emost in River State 980 Naira 22 Kobo. Now they uh, set down some notes here that one PMS prices are not set by government but negotiated directly between parties on an arm's length basis according to the PIA uh, section 206. And NMPC is paying Angote refinery in USD for September 2024 PMS offtake as Naira transactions will commence on October 1st 2024. And if the quoted pricing Plats 10 PPM FOB AR badge plus uh, $46 premium is disputed. NNPC will be grateful for any discount from Nangote Refinery, which will be pay, which will be passed on 100% to the public. Mm. Not much needs to be said about this. Not a single figure here across uh, these six geopolitical zones that we have touched will be selling for less than 100 and uh, 960 naira per liter yes. which is almost approximately 1000 1, yes. now let me tell you something that is one of you know this price templates that you just read out or read out is actually stipulated by nmpc nmpc yes and that is one of the danger of monopoly you know we're talking before you you read this yes we're talking about monopolizing the market which is not good for economy drive because it will give an individual, a particular company like the NMPC, to determine what happens in the market. And with these templates, it means that you cannot get fuel anywhere in Nigeria less than the price template that NMPC have rolled out. Even if some other investors or some of the marketers or major marketers yeah. get this price at a lesser rate, you understand? That means that they won't sell less because NMPC are the umpire that controls and regulate our petrol and everything that has to do with our pricing. Now, what I want to say in respect to this is that that figure is still very, uh, is something that is a shock to Nigeria. But <laughs> Nigeria can still bear, you understand, for a few weeks. We have been, we have exercised patience with the federal government for many years, for many months, buying for 1,000 Naira, 950 Naira. So we can still exercise a little bit more of patience till October 1st, which is just about less than 14 days. And do you do you see the possibility of, of, of the, the price of PMS dropping dwindle. after the September? The price will dwindle after September. Well, with the monopoly, that, with the monopoly that NNPCL no. is playing at the moment with Angote Refineries PMS. And that is why I said earlier that yes. this drama, Nigerians have not joined in the drama yet. The drama that you're seeing right now is between the Dangote refineries and the NNPCL. What's the possible the outcome? Nigerian people yes. will look at this. Experts will look at the price, especially when it is our own code. It is our now. It is not Dangote. All what you're seeing right now is Dangote because he said it's sorted for his code. Even if he get the code for 100 Naira, if he convert from, del from, from dollar, as long as he has said that this is what he's going to sell, we do not have choice. We cannot determine. We cannot challenge his his decision because yes. we do not follow him to the business to the market where he purchased the goods. Uh, and and we are not at the negotiation table. We as are well. not at the negotiation table. But now, so right now, persons at the negotiation table, which I'd like you to respond to, is the independent petroleum marketers. They are not there now. They're asking that the, the, the no. We are even talking about the crude. The crude. Now, yes. I haven't refined the crude. Now they're asking that. They be taken into consideration. Do you think that going forward, that conversation of having Dangote sell to independent marketers directly can come? It will come in definitely. I have told you, it is just for the meantime. NMPC cannot continue to be the only person because even Dangote is expected to export this good outside Nigeria. Dangote, like I told you, sometimes in this uh, that Dangote has about fifteen million guitars we serve that can serve this country for about 15 days even if it's not refining so nigeria alone is not just the market that angola is targeting now if that is the case 
Now, we said that Dangote is going to sell to NMPC in Nigeria, and it's going to sell to some other countries outside Nigeria. That means some independent marketer can have a posy arrangement where they can buy from Dangote from outside Nigeria. Now, now Honorable, why I ask is because last week, we also looked at a situation where there were purported reports that there was a boycott of Dangote diesel over cheaper prices, and a lot of persons were taken aback why this would be happening if it is not orchestrated by some certain players in the market if you have cheaper diesel why not go for it which is also at a higher quality like we saw the reports as conducted no, as part of the statement press statement that was issued about two days ago it was clearly stated that dangote is free to sell ag automotive gas oil to local import, uh, marketers. marketers so that has been resolved but i'm still going back to talk about the pms dangote is selling to NMPC now because NMPC also is a shareholder. They hold about 7.5% of the shares at Dangote Refineries. So they will be considered first. Yes. But it is a personal and a private business. But with time, if our refineries are working now, we have modular refineries. And that is where Nigeria needs to act now. Nigeria needs to put pressure on the federal government to ensure that licenses are given to any investors who want to set up a modular refineries across Nigeria. That will be the next move that will help to, com to put a fair competition in the market that will see to the dropping of the price. But definitely, whether you like it or not, the, pr the price of PMS will dwindle at the time that our crude is being supplied by the Nigerian NMPC and it's refined in Nigeria and it's sold in Naira to the NMPC. So we are not as all these things that is happening now is a drama to me that we are buying fuel in this country at 950 or 1050 Naira. For me, it's crazy price. But nevertheless, some people argued that Nigeria still buy the cheapest kind of fuel anywhere in the world. But for me, I'm not going to join in that argument because we hold these refineries and then we are going to only act based on the economic situation of the country. We are not going to continue to hear that rhetorics and narratives that Nigeria still buy cheapest price, cheapest fuel anywhere in the world. That is not the argument. The argument is that you look at look, you need to look at the indicators. You look at look, you need to look at the economy. You need to look at the cost of living. You need to know the environment you find yourself. How much is salaries? How much are the salaries of workers? How much do private sector pay their workers? And you are expecting us to compete economically with other countries of the world. It's not going to work. So the Nigerian people will speak. NMPC is speaking, Dangote is speaking, but the Nigerian people will speak October 1st. Now, very quickly, before we take a commercial break, let's also talk about another issue in the news related to the dollarization of our economy. Earlier reported by the New Telegraph, we saw a report about what airline operators are facing, particularly with 60% of aircraft on offshore maintenance facing an existential threat. Now, this is a challenge that has also forced the cost of flying in Nigeria to skyrocket to about 200% from what it was. Now, almost all the airlines, Lagos to Abuja, 85,000 naira flat rate, and they are saying the cost of repair and maintenance is still dollar driven. Is there any, any hope that we can now start having MRO facilities, much like we have in Akwai Bomb across other airports in Nigeria. What's your what's your thoughts on this? And is there any hope for airline operators going forward? You see, it is and uh, it, that particular uh, information or uh, sector, we need to put certain things into consideration. And that is, you have to look at the level of our our industrialization, education, skills, and all that. A lot of Nigerians need to understand that. Most of the companies that is responsible for this maintenance are not local companies. These things are not done in Nigeria, like they're done outside the shores of this country. And you will expect that dollars will be involved. And in the event where dollar still controls most of our businesses, we are still going to be paying higher because we are not producing countries. We import almost everything that we use in this part of the world. So dollar there is no way Naira can compete against dollar as at now but that is not a good thing to say but the truth of the matter is that we need to look inwardly we need to change our education base to be so sufficient that most of these things can be done easily in nigeria you no know, we can we are only trying to manage this situation Beatles. you need to know that you cannot give what you don't have 
this maintenance, this cost of this and that and that. It is not completely the fault of this sector. It's the fault of the level of what? Expert rates, technocrats in that sector. We have limited number of technocrats, limited number of facilities in the country that can do a overhaul maintenance and services to this aircraft. And it's beyond just the services. There are other byproducts and other things that are not readily available. Even manpower that are not readily available that is a source outside the country that affect the cost of operations of these airlines in the country. So going forward, we need to start looking inwardly, look at our education sector, look at some exchanges and linkages that we can do with some superpowers. You know, the president went to China. You know, part of the things that should be discussed is about how we can localize these technologies. Enough of bargaining, enough of take this and give this. Now, the language should change from how do we domesticate some of these technologies that we can begin as people do these things for ourselves instead of coming to help us? And that aid, 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 most of the things that the president and all these chiefs is to aid our economy. We don't need aid anymore. We need the domestication of technology skills. Uh, 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 all right, Honorable Desmond, uh, we will come back to you to continue on this particular discussion. And as Beto termed it, uh, a way of stopping the creeping dollarization of our economy as a country. We'll go on a very brief commercial break. When we return, the discussion continues on this newspaper review segment. Do, sir, do stay with us. Well, thanks for staying with us. There's just time now for one more issue in the news on the local scenes as we talk about Saturday's election. With less than five days to go to the uh, Edogubo polls, the leadership of the All Progressive Congress, APC, led by the Vice President alongside the President of the Senate, were in Edo Bini City for a rally. Now, this morning, earlier on the paper on the Nigerian Tribune, we saw the headline story in terms of the trade of words between the PDP and the APC over the alleged plan removal of Governor Godwin Abaseke's uh, security aid. Now, many have talked about how heated the elections might be following the failure of the PDP to sign the peace accord. Let's just get your thoughts ahead of this off-secretary election. Are you satisfied with the level of preparedness? Um, you know, like I told you, like I usually say, that um, uh, democracy and election in Nigeria is still work in progress. We've had level of uh, successes that have been recorded in the recent years, and there are still more obstacles that we are still faced with in our electoral empire that we still need improvement on. But having said that, uh, what you are seeing in Edo is normal, considering the environment we find ourselves, especially the Edo, Edo environment. In fact, that the gladiators there will always be it is this election of edo states is a clash of the titans you know between the apc pdp and don't forget the underdogs the labor party akbata you know you're expected to see some level of um, heated argument but at the end of the day i hope and we pray that it's going to be seamless it's going to be peaceful at the end of the day but i would want the security architectures the security apparatus in edo state the Nigerian police, the civil defense, to be on top of their game to ensure that the election are seamless and they shouldn't eat the poverty. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. There is needless for the withdraw to withdraw the, the security of the governor a few days to the election. To the election. You know, two days to election. It's it's madness, you know. So but then the governor's too is expected to tread with caution, putting in mind the love and the interest of the people and the security of the people of the state as the governor of the state. So they shouldn't do anything that would jeopardize, you know, security plans in the state. And I know you're very huge participants in election monitoring. Beyond the Edo, there's also the Ondo elections coming up. And so far with your visits to the uh, polling stations, are you also, on the other hand, satisfied with the level of commitments from INEC? I expect 100% delivery. From INEC this election because there was no much pressure. You know, and they talked about availability of fund and resources. Yes, about, apart from the fund, they also referred to the IREV and DIVA situation, saying that it is a must to be adhered to in this off second election. Even INEC, my Mahmoud, Professor Mahmoud, have said this 
on countless occasions, even recently when they went for sensitization in Edo State, that the election will be seamless, that some of the drama and some of the failure we expect from IRF in the last general elections will not be uh, seen in the Edo election. So we want to hold them by their words. Like I said, it is a work in progress, but prosperity will always get at us. And that's why I would advise that this election of Edo State and Undo State, the INEC chairman should prove that is worthy for that office. Uh, all right, Honorable Desmond, uh, that's uh, the very much we can take on these national issues developing uh, on newspaper publications this morning. And I must thank you for always finding the time to come around the studio and share your thoughts with us. It's, the pleasure is always mine, at least for the country. All right. For